Hi, Coach. Um, I guess I'll start with the obvious one. Um, your thoughts about, uh, uh, I guess, the, the, the challenges that Sam Howell poses and, uh, you know, does he kind of kind of put him in the same kind of class as, you know, the guys you face like Mac Jones and Kyle Trask? Yeah, uh, I think Sam's an extremely talented quarterback, um, throws the ball very accurately, uh, and there's really no limit to how far he can throw the ball. That's one of the things that jumps off the film is just his arm strength to throw the big ball down the field is uh, extremely impressive. And so, um, yeah, I think this goes back into a, an extremely balanced offense uh, that can hurt you a lot of different ways, throwing it and running it and uh, and making sure that, that we're tight in coverage and that, that we don't give him uh, open access throws to make it easy for him. And, and Mike, does, uh, does your preparation change at all when you see the – the guys that they have opt out the 2000 yard running backs, their top receiver. No, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, obviously we have a tremendous amount of respect for the North Carolina program. Uh, Max done a great job recruiting there since he's been there. Uh, obviously those are extremely talented players uh, that have chosen uh, not to play in this game, but uh, we're operating under the firm belief that there are more talented football players in that program that they're going to put in and, and easily fill those roles. Okay. Thank you very much, coach. Yep. All right, next up is Britton Zwerman from the Houston Chronicle. Coach, good to see you again. It's been too long. Yeah, uh, hey, Brett, how are you? Good. Hey, I just wanted to ask you about, you know, your three years at Texas A&M, what's been kind of the most rewarding aspect of this time with, with turning around this defense? And this wow, um, that's a broad question. It is. Uh, yeah, it, it's, been, it's been a heck of a ride. Um, I've told our kids this a lot this year. Um, extremely proud of uh, how far we've come as a unit, um, probably just from a, a, a mentality and culture standpoint more than every, anything, how we go about our day-to-day -day business, how we approach um, preparation, how we get prepared to play games. Um, I think we have made some tremendous strides behind the scenes in all of those areas. Uh, and I think that has, has kind of helped uh, obviously the product on the field become better as we've been here over three years. Um, you know, and also extremely proud just of how they've handled this season. You know, it's, it's, it's um, when you get your hopes up that this year could be a really good year. And then you, you, you deal with all the obstacles and hurdles that we dealt with this year. Um, you know, obviously those kids showed a tremendous amount of maturity in, in handling it the way they did and continuing to do their work and go about their business and doing it the right way. Okay, thank you. Congrats on your son's commitment, by the way. That's no, I appreciate great. you, Brett. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, next up is Zach Taylor from Brian Broadcasting. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, you were one of the more vocal coaches, I guess, uh, on social media after the college football playoff committee had made its decision. Uh, how do you help your guys get over that disappointment and then focus on business at hand? And that's North Carolina. Yeah, quickly and easily. Um, Obviously, you know, we believe we had a tremendous season, um, but that was that was for that day. Uh, the day after that, you, you kind of implore that same 24 hour rule, which is um, it's on to the next task. And for us, the next task is uh, winning a New Year's Six Bowl, uh, playing our type of football, playing the way we're capable of playing of in the Orange Bowl. Um, you quickly get a really talented opponent in front of you and you start watching film on them and you realize uh, how much energy and effort this thing's going to take for us to go out there and have success in this game. Um, and it becomes a really easy transition to just move on to the next thing. And how have you seen Aaron Hansford really progress this year? Obviously with Anthony opting out, I know that uh, a lot was put on his shoulders, but how have you seen him really come into to his own this year? Yeah, Anthony's had, or Aaron's had a really good year for us and uh, like super proud of, of how he's done that. Um, you know, it, it's been a tremendous growth for him from from last year, you know, kind of being a third down player to, to having to take on the ownership of being out there every down in, in the game, uh, going through the run schemes, knowing the run fits, knowing the pass drops, not just being a blitzer, which is, is I think what he is exceptional at um, and, and really has embraced that challenge. And I think probably maybe more than anyone in our program uh, has gotten better every single time he's gone out there on Saturday and played. And so uh, we think he's become one of the better linebackers in the country and, um, you know, really happy for him and everything he's done. Thanks. All right, let's move on to Robert Cessna from the Bryan College Station Eagle. 
Yeah, Mike, uh, great uh, run defense, but you did have a few games where you gave up some yardage. When you went back and looked at those games, were there common themes of why other t- few teams were able to run the ball against you? Um, no, I don't know if there were common themes. Um, I think, um, you know, I think in this in this in this day and age with offenses attacking you sideline to sideline it, it takes a tremendous amount of discipline to defend the run because you're not just defending uh you know three yards in a cloud of dust anymore um and so i think um anytime you get lapsed in in what you're trying to do and how you're trying to fit something in, in where your eyes are supposed to be anytime that relaxes in any way shape or form you put yourself at risk to give up big plays in the run game and uh, I, I would say maybe um, in, in some different ways that led to, to some of the, the lack of execution uh, in the games where people were able to run the ball. And if I could follow up on Brent's question, what about, are you where you thought you would be in year three and what's left? Is it just b- better talent and more depth across the board? <laughs> I don't know where I thought I would be. Um, or where I thought we would be. Um, when, when you get into these these jobs, you just kind of put your head down and, and just try to work to get better every day. So, so I had no expectation of where we would be. Um, I still think we are just scratching the surface of what we are capable of. Um, you know, and I don't mean that to sound any way other than it does. I just, I still think there's a lot of room for us consistently to be uh, a more dominating defense play in play out. I do. Um, I know, I know um, we've had some success this year and there's been games where we've, we've shown up, but I, I still think, you know, we're just scratching the surface of what we're capable of. Thanks. And I'm with Brent. We need to see you more. <laughs> Next up is John Wilson from KBTX and then Chuck Carlton. Coach, what is the main emphasis or two to your defense when, when you're taking on a team that is statistically as balanced as North Carolina? Um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, this game is going to be a lot about, um, winning one-on-one matchups. I think the way they play offense, they're going to, they're going to spread you from sideline to sideline. Um, if you commit numbers to the run, they're going to throw it. Uh, if you try to commit numbers to the pass, they're going to run it and and they're going to put their kids in space, um, where they're getting one-on-ones. And so, um, in different ways across the board, we're going to have to find ways to win one-on-one matchups, whether that's uh, up front uh, O-line versus D-line so that we can play boxes where we're, we're able to stop the pass a little bit cleaner. Um, or when we do commit to the run that we're winning one-on-one on the outside uh, with our DBs. I think that's, that's the, that's the trick to these, these high powered offenses that go sideline to sideline. Like someone has to win somewhere uh, in order for you to be successful. We've got time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Gabe Bach and then Travis Brown. Yeah, Mike, you are number one in the SEC in total defense, number two against the run. Do you talk to your guys about the wrecking crew lineage, and do you feel like your players have, have earned that label this year? <laughs> so I appreciate you asking me that, Gabe, because because I want to make sure everybody understands our stance on this. Um, we are honored when the the term wrecking crew is thrown around in reference to this defense. Uh, We understand how important that is to Texas A&M tradition and how important that is to this fan base. Um, I think when our guys say, and I say, we haven't earned that, or or that's not something we're chasing, you know, that was a successful era of Texas A&M defense. That was not something that could be accomplished in four quarters, one game, one season, one moment, Um, you know, if we can get to the point where over the course of years, we are playing at a very, very high level and we are helping this team win championships. That's what the wrecking crew means to me. Um, Not just like, Hey, you guys came out and played a good game. So the wrecking crew's back. I I don't want to undersell what that group did for Texas A&M football. Um, But I also respect the heck out of that tradition and I'm honored anytime people use it to reference us. Um, but that's just not a, a name that we want to be throwing around lightly uh, around here. We know how important it is to people. What makes DeMarvin Leal such a special football player that goes above and beyond the stat sheet, Mike? I don't know if I can answer that. He just walked in the room. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, he's uh, Mar- Marv's a special kid because he's one of those kids that is um, supremely talented, but also has an extremely high level work ethic. 
And so um, I think he's a kid who, who um, isn't just relying on, on his talents to be successful. He's continuing to work. He's continuing to grind. Um, he gets better every time he goes on the field. Um, you know, and his energy sometimes is really infectious for our group because um, he kind of leads us out there through some of the dull moments of practice. Thank you, Mike. All right, we're over our 10 minutes, but we're going to power through Chuck Carlton and try to get to Travis Brown. Yeah, I was curious from from your standpoint, I mean, the defense has gotten better in a lot of different areas, but is there one that you're most particularly gratified to see this year in terms of the improvement that was made? One that just kind of said, hey, we need to get better in this area, and we did, or you saw the, the effort that went into that? Um. I don't know if there's one area. Um, I think I'm, I'm happy that there were games where we went out there against SEC West foes um, and were able to play like a championship level defense. Um, I think that's something we have challenged our kids um, all the way across the board since we've been here, that um, if you want to be great in this league, in this division, um, you know, there's going to be times where we have to, we have to carry our weight heavily. Uh, and we've been able to do that. And, and, you know, and then I think everything needs to make sure we understand this too, like, like defense and offense go hand in hand. And, and uh, when you run the ball, like we do, and you control the line of scrimmage, like we do, uh, and, and you get to spend as much time watching our old line move people like we do, um, that helps too. Uh, let's not, let's not undersell that element of this thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of this team and how this team has has grown from a physical standpoint and how we approach games and, and how we get after people. All right, we're going to wrap it up with uh, Travis Brown and apologies to the people that are left on the queue. Coach, I uh, appreciate you giving us time. Thanks for, for talking to us. Um, yeah. Generally speaking, when you look ahead to where you'd like your, to see your career go, is head coaching something that you'd like to get into at some point whenever the right opportunity presents itself? Yeah, I, I think everyone has ambitions um, for their future, um, but but um, those things are just kind of on the back burner um, when you're when you're at a place like I'm at, when you're uh, in a program that is one of the best programs in the country, um, when you're extremely happy in College Station, living in the area we live. Um, you know, it's not something that you spend a lot of time focusing on, to be honest with you. I know I know people like to spend a lot of time focusing on it, but um, you know, I'm just, I'm just extremely excited and honored to be the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M and uh, uh, where my future takes me or, or what happens in the future. I don't really spend a lot of time worrying about it. Thanks coach. All right. Thank you, coach. That's all the time we have. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. It.